Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today I am super, super excited because I have a foundation that I am like, ah, I love, like I love this foundation and I'm always excited when I find a product that I love this much, but especially when it's a foundation. Um, I don't know that I have loved a foundation this much since maybe the NARS Light Reflecting, which I know wasn't that long ago, but you guys know how much I love that one. <gasps> This one too, just the same. It's so, so good. I didn't even do a wear test on this yet because I, I bought it and I was so excited to try it. I put it on and when I first put it on, I was just like blown away with how good it looked. And then I wore it and throughout the day, it continued to just look so good and I'm just in love with it. So today we're gonna apply that foundation and I am going to try some other new products that I have that I'm excited to share. Some kind of viral products that I'm a little late to the game, but the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, we got some of those to play with. We got some um, Laguna Cream bronzers from NARS. Are these new? I got these in PR and I'm not quite sure if they're new. I know NARS has cream bronzers, but they kind of were packaged up like they were new. So I got that. I've got the new Laura Mercier um, translucent honey. Uh, this is the ultra blur powder. I also love this. Spoiler alert. I haven't even told you the foundation yet. I haven't even told you the foundation. The Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation is uh, so good. So we're gonna apply this, talk about this. I got the like viral blush from Dior that everyone loves. This little pink guy right here, Pink Glow, I think is the name of it. And you know, I got some really fun, cute products from Kaja. So we're just gonna play around. That's what we're gonna do. Super excited. All right, let's go ahead and start with, um, let's start with the e.l.f. Halo Liquid Glow Filter, okay? I got two shades and I got the shade three and the shade four. So three is light, four is medium. Four, it's quite a big jump between the two. I know I'm like the last person to share these, so you guys have probably seen a ton of coverage on these already, but that's a big jump. This is quite, you know, quite a big jump between the two. So let's do light, because that looks like it's more true to my color in terms of a highlighter. And everyone says this is the dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Um, I have heard that there's some differences between the two. Uh, like this is a little bit better. I think it was Morgan Turner that said that she likes to wear this underneath uh, makeup where the Charlotte Tilbury she'll wear over. And maybe that wasn't Morgan. If I said that wrong, I apologize, Morgan, but I did see your video talking about this. So it's a nice big chubby applicator. I'm gonna apply it like I apply the Charlotte Tilbury, which I like to apply the Charlotte Tilbury also underneath my foundation because I like more of a subtle glow. So I'm just gonna apply it kind of where I would like to highlight the face. And we will just go in and actually just kind of blend this in with the brush, the PK Beauty 108. The color looks very similar to my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Very pretty, very subtle. I like that. I have a little bit of brows on. I had a Zoom meeting earlier and I didn't, I knew I was gonna be filming today, so I didn't want to put a full face of makeup on, but I put some tinted SPF and a little bit of brows called it a day. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This retails for $58. Let me read you what it says off of Sephora's website. So it's described as a medium weightless liquid foundation that builds, uh, has buildable coverage. It has a natural finish and it is supposed to deliver a light diffusing blurring effect to minimize the look of perfections, fine lines, and wrinkles. So that all sounds great. I got the shade at 7.5 and this is like the perfect shade for me. I did really well. I was very proud of myself because I ordered this online and picked up in store and it was perfect. All right, so this is what the foundation looks like. One pump, a pretty generous size when you do one full pump. I'm gonna go in with the BK Beauty 108. Oh, that elf is so pretty. Look at that. So pretty. So putting the elf underneath your foundation is obviously going to give a softer, more subtle glow. You could also put it on top if you want a bit more intensity. This foundation just instantly blurs out pores and imperfections in the skin. It really does create this very, very smooth, airbrushed, soft focus look to the skin. It is gorgeous. It has this really like true natural finish to the skin. There's really not a lot of shine or glow, but it's definitely not a matte finish either. It really is just this beautiful, beautiful natural finish. So you can obviously alter that by using a product like the e.l.f. or the Charlotte Tilbury, using cream highlighters, or if you want to obviously mattify the skin, just going in with a heavier powder to do that. But you know, I typically like a, um, kind of a natural matte finish. I'm in here in Texas and it's so hot. So I'm really always concerned with my foundation looking super shiny and like melting off my skin. So I like a foundation that 
doesn't do that. <laughs> not only does it not do that, but it stays in place all day long. That's what I look for in a foundation. You don't really need much of this. I find that I don't even use a full pump. I use about half a pump. It's pretty like heavily pigmented. So a little bit goes a long way. Don't make the mistake of applying too much. Really just use what you need. Even if you feel like you're wasting some, like I'm just gonna take a, um, little makeup wipe and remove this, which I know feels like a giant waste, but I'd rather waste it than apply it to my skin and then feel like I have too much makeup on. So you can always do a half a pump once you get comfortable with the dispenser. Oh my God, that's so good. Like I almost don't even wanna put powder on it. And I rarely ever say that. It is so, so good. Okay, let's take a wipe to this before this ends up all over my clothes. Okay, so for concealer, I'm gonna go in with the Too Faced Born This Way for my concealer, and I'm just gonna apply a tiny bit of this underneath the eyes. I already have on a little bit of like my tinted moisturizer under the eye. For my Zoom meeting, I wanted a little bit of coverage, so I just took my tinted moisturizer and applied it under my eye and kind of layered it up a little bit. Um, and we'll go in, I just have this brush, it's an hourglass brush. We're gonna go in and, oh, so good. Oh my God, this foundation is so good. Have you tried this? Like. I know it's been out for a little bit. Have you tried this foundation? If you have, let us know what you think about it, please. I'd love to hear what others think. So the Laura Mercier powder, I got the shade um, medium, I think it is, or the I got the shade two, what, what shade did I get? Honey, I guess that's the shade that I got, but I remember it not being the lightest one. And when I opened it, I thought that might be a little deep for me, but it actually works great. Um, it does have more of like a kind of honey color, yellow color to it, like a little brightening effect, where I typically go with a powder that's a little bit lighter than my skin, almost, almost looks white, but more translucent and sheer. I'm gonna take a BK Beauty 103 brush, and I'm really just going to kind of like, you know, softly work it into the brush so that I don't apply too much. That's the purpose of that. And I'm just gonna press it onto the skin. This powder is really nice. It definitely, I mean, the foundation alone blurs everything, so it's kind of difficult to, to really, I should probably wear this powder with more of a foundation that um, maybe more of a glowy foundation that accentuates pores to see its magic but it looks really beautiful on top of this. I mean, I would say it helps smooth everything out, but honestly, the foundation kind of did that on its own. Okay, and I'm just remembering that I'm going in with the cream bronzer. So ideally, I should have done that before the powder, but we will go at it anyway. So I'm gonna use Laguna One. There's Laguna One and then there's Laguna Original, and the Laguna Original is a little bit darker. So this is what the two look like next to each other. You can see that I already swatched the one there. We're gonna go in with that one. We want a little bit lighter application here. And I'm gonna use the um, 106 foundation brush. So the same brush I use for my foundation. I'm just gonna go right into the product. Okay, that shade is a little gray for me. We're gonna switch gears actually, and we're gonna go to um, Laguna Original. Let's try the other side. So that's deeper, it's also warmer. Okay, so note to self, definitely apply these before you apply powder. I can tell that the powder is interfering um, because I put on you know, a good, good amount of powder. I can tell that it's interfering with the cream. So that was my fault. I do love NARS cream bronzer formula though. I have a few in the other shades when they launch those and I really love the formula. It's very emollient, got the right amount of pigment, very easy to blend out, pretty. Okay, so this actually went on lighter than I expected it to. And again, I think that having that powder on before kind of altered the shade a little bit and altered the finish, but I like the way that it came out here. Okay, so next, let's pop on a little bit of blush and I'm so excited to apply this blush. This is by Dior. This is like, you know, this isn't new. This is kind of like their viral um, rosy glow blush. Everybody loves this. This color and I will be honest this isn't a color that I would walk by the makeup counter and be drawn to it just looks really like bright and bubble gummy and I like more kind of peachy um, softer hues but everyone loves this so we're gonna give this a try I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 103 it's a giant brush for blush I know that but it's pretty fluffy which means it's gonna apply it pretty light and sheer so I'm just gonna smile and I'm gonna kind of sweep it up smile and kind of sweep it up apply it on the apple cheeks but then sweep that's pretty, that is really pretty. And around the temples, that's a pretty color. It's definitely more pinky than I, than I normally wear, but it's sheer to where it looks like pretty and flushed. You can build it, I'm building up to get quite a bit of color. 
you can definitely get a softer look, but I like, I like me some blush. <laughs> okay, next we're gonna go in and I'm going to play with this Kaja Beauty Wing Eyeliner Pin and Stamp little set here. And I'm excited about this. I've had this for a little while. I'm actually filming this video like way early filming it. By the time this will go up, it'll have been a couple of weeks because I am ahead of the game. I'm so proud of myself. I have like pre-filmed um, the videos for the next couple of weeks. So by the time this goes up, it'll be, I've, I would have used, used this weeks ago. Okay, so this is the wink stamp. You have a left and right side. So this is actually like a little wing stamp. That's exactly what it is. Can you see that? To create a little stamp on the eye. So. I know it's kind of hard to see there, but um, we are going to apply this and then it has the liquid liner to, you know, kind of connect it and make everything nice and streamlined and cohesive. So what I'm gonna do first is apply a uh, MAC paint pot in the shade Painterly. No, this is ochre, not Painterly. Just to get a nice kind of bare canvas, kind of being quick and a little sloppy here, I'm gonna set it with a powder. I, I really like this as a primer when um, you're like, you know, when you wanna cancel out pigmentation on the eyelid. Or if you don't plan on wearing a whole lot of eyeshadow and you just want a base there, you can just pop like a bronzer color in the crease, something like that. I'm gonna take the BK201 because it's a big fluffy eye brush. And we're going to, um, let's see, what do we have here? What do we have nearby? I'm gonna take this Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. It's a powder bronzer. And then I'm gonna take this La Mer like pressed powder, just, you know, skin tone color. And I'm gonna first run the La Mer all over the eye to kind of set that paint pot. Then I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and we're gonna do just a soft sheer sweep of this kind of in the crease. Because this brush is like much larger than my actual crease, we're gonna kind of get a wash of this color like all over the lid. But because it's a nice, you know, bronzer, it's gonna look really soft and natural. Oh, I love this. I'm actually really loving this blush now that I've, now that it's kind of sat on my skin for a little while. I love it. I can see why there's the hype. And I'm really taking my time to build this bronzer because it is pretty sheer and I just want, I want a little bit more impact there. Okay, so now let's go in. I feel like my hair is really big today. Let's go in with this liner. I'm excited and a little nervous at the same time. Okay, so that's great. You have a right side and a left side. So we will start with the right side. All right. And it is shaped like literally like the perfect wing. So I'm probably not gonna talk as I do this and I probably won't even breathe. <laughs> so hopefully, okay. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna meet this to my outer lash line corner. Ooh, I like that. That was pretty easy, very easy. Okay, I'm not gonna go over it because you know what? I feel like with this product, you gotta just put it on there, be confident, press it, and then kind of step back. Anything you can perfect also with the uh, liner pen. Okay, so we're going in with the left side and I want it to kind of angle the same way that my right side, so I wanna make sure that I place it so that it is angled that way. Perfect. So the key is just, you know, looking straight in the mirror. Like if you look straight in the mirror for the first eye, look straight in the mirror for the left eye. Don't look down. Don't like close your eyes. Whatever you do to that first eye, do to the second. Um, then you can go in with your pen and shake it up a little bit and create the rest of your line. I'm gonna keep it real thin. And once I get here to the stamp, I'm just going to connect it. And then I'm just going to slightly fill it in. I never film this late in the day. And let me tell you, it is starting to get warm up here. My beauty room is upstairs and you know, it's like a million degrees in Texas. So even with a working AC, it gets warm and I feel that warmth. Okay, so now that we have the liner on, I'm gonna go into the lower lashes. I steer it clear of black typically on my lower lashes. So I'm going to go in with this uh, long wear cream shadow stick from Bobbi Brown in the shade golden bronze. And I'm just going to create a little bit of a bronzy shimmer wash of color on the lower lash line just to kind of tie it together. Black can be really harsh. So you want to make sure that you have something going on down there. I'm going to curl my lashes and I'm really excited to play with this next product because it is like the cutest, the cutest cosmetic product I have seen. It's by Kaja and it's this little trio set of a lengthening, volumizing, and a clear mascara, you guys. And they're magnetic. So they just like 
stick together. Isn't that the cutest thing? So this is the clear. It says it's a lash primer um, and also a brow serum gel. It's clear though, so I don't know. I don't know like if it quite primes my lashes like um, my Dior does. It's hard to tell. It, I think it does actually. I can see getting a little bit of length here, but it's definitely more of a sheer formula than what I'm used to using. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of that onto the lashes. Yeah, it definitely gave them some length, I can see. And I'm gonna go in first with the volumizing mascara. I have found that I like to use this is what the wand looks like on the volumizing. I actually find that I like to use these two together. Like I like to go in with the volumizing and then go back in with lengthening. I have like a chunk of lashes missing on my outer corner just from, I don't know. I don't know what I did or if it's just like a growth cycle, but they're like missing. So waiting for those guys to grow back. I really love a clean, simple eye, like very little shadow and just focused on liner and lashes. It's a very like, sophisticated kind of elegant look perfect okay so now that i've got some volume there i'm going to go and add a little bit of length so we're going to go in with the lengthening mascara and this wand is quite different you can see that it's skinnier it's longer it has tiny little teeth whereas the volumizing was more of that kind of fat mascara wand these types of wands are great for really like coating and separating lashes. Okay, so for I do like the lengthening on the lower lashes I found, more so than the volumizing one because um, of the wand. Okay, perfect. Oh, I love that. So a nice, soft, kind of natural lash. Perfect. Okay, very nice, very soft. I feel like I need to go in and powder underneath my eyes because I am heating up up here in this room and I can feel makeup like melting <laughs> okay all right you guys next we're gonna go in with um lips we're gonna finish the lips off and i'm gonna keep the lips super light and glossy and not a whole lot of fuss um because i kind of want this liner to be the focal point um i'm gonna use two products just because i want to show these two products off on camera the gucci beauty uh glare gl glare glow and care lipsticks i have been loving these um this is the shade sally soft honey and it's such a pretty Look at my lips. This is the color of my lips. They're kind of purple looking lately. It's a really just pretty light, glossy, hydrating, sheer lip color. And it feels really nice. Very pretty. And then I'm gonna top it with a Kaja Beauty Gloss Shot. It's a lip gloss. And this is the shade Pink Drink. And it's just like a neutral kind of rosy pink. I like the um, shape of this applicator. It's got a little bit of a curve, so it fits perfectly on the lip. And it is a great complement to the lipstick. Obviously both are, un are unnecessary. You don't really need to do both these products on top of each other, but for the sake of wanting to try new things and show them off, we did them both. Okay, what do we think? What do we think about the liner? I like it. It's like a kind of a, it's a little bump up from what I typically do with my winged liner. I always, when I use a liquid pen, I always do a little bit of a winged liner, but I call it a baby wing. This is like an adolescent wing. <laughs> it's not quite a grown up wing, but it's an adolescent wing. What do we think? Do we like the adolescent wing on me or do we like the baby wing? I think we need to like coin that phrase. I think we need to start like referring to our wings based on like stages of life. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was so fun just to sit here, hang out and try new products with you. I'll have everything that I use listed uh, in the description box. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.